In this video, you will discover how to view alarms and events in the TRIO Q Data Radio and learn how to configure custom alarm settings. Before we begin, here is a reminder of the variants of the Q Data Radio. The QR150 and QR450 remote type radios are configured identically except for the frequency ranges. They are typically used at remote sites, though may be used at the master or repeater sites if desired. The QB150 and QB450 are 19-inch rack-mountable units, suitable for full-duplex master or repeater locations. The QP150 and QP450 are physically similar in appearance to the QB, but instead of containing a single full-duplex radio, they contain two QRs for a protected or hot standby link. The QH consists of a pair of QBs and a hot standby controller. After connecting to a Q data radio with a web browser, the monitoring menu may be accessed. The summary page includes various useful information, including the radio's serial number, firmware version, and MAC address. Also in the monitoring menu, the statistics log is very useful for tracking the radio's health and activities over a period of time. The display may be set to show entries once per minute, per hour, per day, or per week. The entries include a timestamp, LAN port activity in packets, and bytes over the air activity and then typical diagnostic parameters such as power supply voltage, temperature, received signal level, and so on. The alarms and events page is a powerful new feature in the Q data radio. The user may at a glance see all current and recent alarm conditions and may review major events that have occurred to the radio. The events log entries include such items as when configuration changes have been made, when alarms occur or are cleared, when the radio powers up, and when a network time protocol update has occurred. Here we see events time stamped with the default time and date beginning in 1975. This radio's NTP client was configured to get the correct time from an NTP server, so after an NTP date time locked event, it can be seen the time has now been updated. For the event log and statistics log to properly timestamp events, the radio must know the correct time. It is possible to manually enter the date and time occasionally into one radio, which then would be configured as the NTP server, but over the long term, it's easier to use a computer with network connectivity to automate the process. If this is done, however, ensure that careful security precautions are taken to isolate the radio system. Here it can be seen that a VSWR alarm has occurred. The state is red or critical with a current value of greater than 10 to 1 VSWR. Note that the critical threshold is 3 to 1. Also note that a global alarm condition occurs in such cases. Here it can be seen that the VSWR has returned to normal with the value reported as now less than 1.5 to 1 VSWR. The alarm state now is showing as blue or recovered. After an alarm has cleared, its state will remain displayed as recovered to show that an issue has occurred. The user may then press the Reset Alarms button on the Alarms and Events page to acknowledge having seen the alarm. Once the Reset Alarms button has been pressed, Presuming no other alarms are currently active, the alarms display will appear like this. Some alarms here are reported as disabled, including frequency offset and RSSI, though warning values may be enabled if desired. All other conditions show as green or normal. Each alarm condition has hard-coded high and low alarm levels. Beyond these levels, the radio will generate an alarm. At this point, the LEDs on the radio will flash all red followed by a green pattern which specifies the alarm. If SNMP is used, a trap or inform will be sent at this point. If TVU Diagnostics or Clear SCADA is used, when the radio is pulled, it will send its current alarm state. Note that a TRIO Q radio will, if necessary, self-protect by reducing its transmit power by six decibels. For example, if a high VSWR or high temperature condition is detected. Each detected alarm condition may be subscribed to the Alarm Output parameter by selecting the Enabled button on the Alarms Setup page. If the radio is a hot standby unit, a QH or a QP, a switchover will only occur if the alarm condition has been subscribed to the alarm output. The General Purpose I.O. or GPIO 
digital output point number one may be reconfigured to generate a physical alarm locally if any alarm tied to the alarm output occurs. Note that the QR does not have a physical alarm output point. Only the rack-mounted QB, QP, and QH, which each have four digital outputs, have this feature. Many alarm conditions in the Q data radio include optionally configurable warning levels. These upper and lower warning limits may be configured to provide advance notice well before the hard-coded alarm limits are reached. Numerous conditions are monitored which may generate an alarm output or a warning. These include temperature, VSWR, which is a comparison of reflected versus forward power, DC power supply voltage, the measured transmit power, PLL lock, which monitors the radio's frequency synthesizer, the operational alarm, representing issues which may not be recoverable, Ethernet link connectivity, and the cooling fans on the rack-mountable units. The receivers of both QBs in a QH hot standby system are always active. This allows continuous testing of the health of both receivers. Parameters analyzed include RX packet comparison. If the percentage of good packets received by the standby radio is greater than that received by the active radio, by a percent greater than the configured differential, a warning and a changeover may be configured. Also, RSSI comparison. Received signal levels of the active receiver are compared with the standby receiver. If the margin or differential in decibel is exceeded, a warning and a changeover may be configured. The QR remote type radio does not have a physical alarm output. Only the rack mountable QB, QH, and QP versions with their four digital outputs include this feature. However, alarm warnings may be configured. These include temperature, frequency offset, RSSI level, VSWR level, and DC power supply voltage. Thank you for watching this video, which demonstrated how to view alarms and events in the Trio Q data radio, as well as how to configure custom alarm limits.